This time I must confess, I feel a total hate for myself. While crowded and swarmed, my heart wishes to be a single self. Seeking that single pearl, I crave to dive deep into the sea. But fear of murderous waves makes me beg for your help, my friends. Scattered with so much going on inside, I long for nothing but an inner unity. Duality must be abandoned if you seek to drink the soul of unity. You must bet and lose everything you've ever owned. If you truly desire to become one with your beloved, Listen to the secret sound of the revelation now. When your quest aspires the skies, fly away from this lowly earth. My heavenly soul, who only nests in the heights, is tired of its house on earth. It wants to abandon the body. It wants to take the final flight. What a wonderful image this is. The soul taking its final flight before disappearing into the heavens and becoming one with God. Surely every poem by Rumi is sheer magic. And I hope that you can spend more and more time with him to learn the truth of your existence. When I read this poem, like so many of Rumi's other poems, I can feel my heart being tugged toward God. It's as if the world, and even life itself, doesn't matter anymore. All that matters is God and how we can reach Him. The rest is mere noise, distraction, and illusion. And what happens to someone like Rumi, for example, who realizes that this life is just a fleeting game. What thoughts, emotions, or feelings overcome such an aware and awake person? My guess, having not experienced this, is that in addition to longing for divine union, that person also might even despise and hate themselves. Of course, I'm not talking about hating one's soul or true essence. I'm talking about hating one's ego, or the one responsible for creating the veil between a soul and its creator. So when Rumi says, I feel a total hate for myself, it can be easy to mistake this as being self-critical or even self-deprecating. 
but nothing is further from the truth. Rumi sees himself as a part of God, or as a single self, and is therefore at the highest point and station in life. He is crowded and swarmed, not necessarily by people, but by his own thoughts and perhaps inner struggles. After all, it's not easy to travel on the spiritual journey. Not only is it an incredibly lonely journey that few truly understand, but it's also filled with endless struggle and sacrifice as the soul continually works to purify itself. In some strange, ironic way, the further one goes, the more resistance they will find. Because the ego is trying to steer that person back into their sleepy existence. If someone is already asleep or unaware, the ego doesn't have to try very hard. But if someone is starting to become more aware and they start to awaken, the ego realizes that it is under threat. And so it tries everything to distract and tempt the person from truly awakening. Of course, this struggle can only last for so long. Eventually, after so much purification, the soul finally releases itself from the ego's grasp and one achieves true awakening and union with God. But let me tell you, it's not that easy. Even for someone like Rumi, it is not easy. He is diving into the vast sea of his soul to find this tiny little pearl called unity. Just imagine if you were actually searching for a pearl in the bottom of the sea. How hard, difficult, and frustrating that must be. So now imagine this analogy being applied to one's spiritual growth and awakening. We all crave to find this pearl of unity but are constantly getting battered and rammed by murderous waves, it's a beautiful term, or the ego's efforts to distract us from our journey. Make no mistake, the ego wants duality. It lives off of duality. It wants you to focus purely on the growth and development of yourself rather than the destruction of yourself, the destruction that creates unity with God. But then we come across this beautiful line that eloquently describes what we must do. Duality must be abandoned if you seek to drink the soul of unity. So if you truly want to become one with God, and to achieve this divine unity, you have to let go of everything and everyone. There may be a lot going on inside you, but you must detach yourself from every single thing and person in your life. You must be so open to letting it all slip away from the grasp of your fingers if you truly want to be in the presence of God, and if you truly want to know your real self. Now, this is a bet that almost none of us would take. We love and attach ourselves to the people and things in our life. We can't imagine even for a moment it being any other way. But all these people and things in our life as great as they can be, also have the potential to pull us away from God. And that is why we often feel a deep emptiness or unhappiness inside us. 
even if we feel happy for a moment or a short period of time, the feeling never lasts. No matter how much we gain, no matter how much we accumulate or grow, there is still something deep missing. We can never fill that void. And that's because we have been looking for happiness in the wrong places. The key to happiness is not in owning things or having countless relationships, countless friends, countless accolades. The key to happiness is to be one with God. Now, this doesn't mean to literally donate everything and say goodbye to everyone. You know, you don't have to move to a remote mountaintop and renounce all life and all society. I know that's probably the image that's in your mind, but you just have to be detached from all these things to truly connect with God. You can be in society and live a normal life and still be detached. You can still connect with God. And that is the main message here. If you really kind of look at this poem at its deepest and most essential level, you will find that however you do it, you must be able to connect with God so deeply that all of a sudden you see through the veil of God and the so-called me. They are one and the same, for we are a part of God, even though we have believed our ego's lies that we aren't. The only way to stop believing these lies is to slowly become aware of this illusion and to let go of all the duality we have created. That's right. Duality never existed except in our mind. There is no hot or cold, no day or night, no good or bad. These are just creations of our imagination trying to categorize and make sense of the world in perfect mental blocks. This letting go of duality and returning to oneness is a beautiful and deep Buddhist-like sentiment. However, it can be so hard to actually put it into practice, to put it in your daily life. Every time we try to dive into the sea, the waves keep pulling us back. But we have to overcome those waves, dive deep into our being, and find the tiny pearl of unity. The tiny invisible pearl nestled deep inside the endless ocean of our soul. And if you find yourself resonating with this message and you actually want to take flight, you would do well to listen to the secret sound of the revelation. This secret sound of the soul can only be heard by the spiritual heart, not by one's ears or mind. It requires deep and tranquil silence, honed through many hours of reflection, meditation, and letting go and letting be. It's no surprise that Rumi chose the pen name Khamosh or silence, to conclude many of his poems. And he is often even believed to have spent hours in silence trying to tap into his soul. There's even a story that sometimes he would stare at a blank book for long periods at a time to help him remember to become empty, to become an empty page, to become nothing. When we ourselves can enter and become this silence, the soul will reveal all its secrets. True wisdom will appear, and peace and love 
will naturally rise to the surface. So I ask you, why settle for this lowly earth when you can fly to the skies? After all, your soul is from heaven, from God, and you have kept it locked up inside this body. It's now time to release your soul and let it take the final flight. For once you do, you won't even identify yourself as a body or even a soul anymore. You will simply be without any names, labels, or sense of identity. You will simply be with God, absorbed into and manifested through Him. This is all you have ever truly yearned for. And if you can discover this secret through your own experience, you will be way ahead of everyone else who is still struggling to navigate this world and to achieve a sense of happiness, peace, and completion. So I hope you guys enjoyed this beautiful poem and the accompanying spiritual interpretation. I know it's very hard to interpret Rumi's poems, but I definitely try to do my best. Make sure you check out the Rumi playlist I've created and please subscribe to this channel for more videos to help you grow and awaken. You know, we all start from the same point in life, no matter if it was Rumi, Buddha, Jesus, or any other enlightened or awakened being. But even though our starting point is the same, our ending points can be very different. Some of us will never enter the sea. Some of us will drown and get beaten up by the waves. We're never really able to dive deeper than that. But a few lucky souls will be able to dive deep down and finally find the tiny pearl that they have been looking for. I truly hope that you become one of those lucky souls to continue on this spiritual path and become reunited with God. And I wish you all the best on this journey, this beautiful journey, as you approach the heavens and take the final flight.